We got some more information about Redfall leak gameplay for Call of Duty Warzone Mobile has come out. People are spending insane amounts of money on Diablo Mortal, and Xbox was able to snap up a big game that was supposed to be a Google Stadia game. So one of the biggest surprises for me at the Xbox and Bethesda showcase was just how good Redfall looked. When they first announced it last year at the end of the showcase, I wasn't that excited for it. It was a game that I was keeping my eye on. I thought it could be something interesting. I liked the vampire theme that they had going, but I wasn't completely sold on it. And then after they showed it off with the gameplay at this year's Xbox and Bethesda showcase, it's be quickly become a game that I'm very excited for. Now we have some more information about how you're going to be able to actually play this game. We know that this is going to have a complete single player experience where you can go in and there's going to be a story and all that type of stuff, or you can squad up with your friends and play in co-op. Now, they talked a little bit more about the open world of Redfall, the challenges and playing alone or playing with your friends. They say here, Arcane has always been known for crafting narrative driven single player campaigns that allow players unprecedented levels of agency and Redfall is carrying on that tradition. While this is an Arcane's first co-op experience, you can also play through the entire game on your own. Harvey Smith, the studio director at Redfall said that a huge emphasis for Redfall has been the solo experience in keeping with Arcane's passions. I mean, you look at some of the other games that they've made, particularly the Dishonored series, that is a solo experience with just a great narrative. Tons of cool stuff to go around, sneak around and take out your enemies and just kind of live inside the world that they've created with Dishonored. He goes on here to say, all the games we've made overlap in a bunch of creative ways, though not two are exactly alike. Redfall is an open world game, but it can be soloed with any of the heroes. The pace becomes more exploratory. You can use recon and stealth to gather info on encounters and avoid enemies to get the drop on them. Now, in terms of the actual characters themselves, we actually got a guide on all of the different heroes that you're gonna be able to play. There are four main heroes here in Redfall that you're gonna be able to play as. The first one is Layla Ellison, who has like kinetic abilities, as you can see here, which is with the quick preview of the type of stuff you're gonna be able to do with Layla. Then there's the vendor, Dev Krausley, who uses different types of gadgets that he's created and knows how to craft for anti-vampire weaponry. You can see here one of the items that dev has created you have jacob boyer who is the dead eye with an undead eye basically seemingly is going to be very good with gunplay but also has a unique psychic raven that you're going to be able to utilize and then you have remy de la rosa who uses robots and engineering and stuff like that to help when you're playing and to help take out the vampires so those are the people you're going to be able to choose and select from whether you're playing alone or if you are squatting up and when it comes to squatting up with your friends for redfall you're going to be able to pretty much choose any character that you want no matter what your friends are selecting you're gonna be able to double up characters you're gonna be able to use the same character in all four co-op slots there is no restrictions on that we already know that as well that if you're connecting to the host the host is going to be the person who gets the progress within the actual story experience although you are going to still be able to level up the character you're using with the person hosting the game but you're not going to actually advance the campaign further you're going to have to do that when you're hosting a game or via playing solo and aaron carter the lead producer touched on squatting up and has this to say a core pillar of the game is familiarity for our heroes that's building that sense of kinship over time you get to see little bits of it in the trailer and the game really emphasizes that through systems that develop the connective tissues between characters as you play together our approach to multiplayer really highlights that by encouraging players to enjoy the campaign with friends or people you know the goal is that being able to invite friends to join you on the journey enhances that experience by letting you share in it together and approach things in a whole new way which makes a ton of sense specifically when it comes to playing alone they really touch on probably having to be more stealthy having to scope out the area that you're going into and making sure you know where your enemies are before taking them out and then with squatting up you're going to have way more different opportunities way more different ways you're going to be able to just figure out how to advance into the next area of the game with all of the different characters abilities coming together and working together so lots to be excited for for redfall some more information on how the game is going to work 
how being able to play solo or squatting up and then the progression and the different characters that are going to be available to be used within Redfall. All right, jumping over here to talk about Call of Duty. Now, Call of Duty every single year is one of the biggest, if not the biggest game when it comes out. I would say over the last couple of years, it's died down a little bit in terms of the hype, but still top selling on the sales list. But this year with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 coming out, the remake of it, it is probably more hyped up than it has been in a very long time as that is a game when it came out back on the xbox 360 was literally a cultural phenomenon really put call of duty on the map as a game that every time you hear about new call of duty there is a ton of hype it was huge for me back on the 360 when i was playing playing with my friends almost every night the lobbies were absolutely insane lobbies that you probably aren't going to be hearing in today's gaming atmosphere because there were probably a lot of people being banned for some of the stuff that was going on in those lobbies but man it was a crazy time when call of duty modern warfare 2 first came out back on the xbox 360 but that's not the only thing coming out from call of duty this year we know warzone 2.0 is coming out which is huge and Call of Duty Warzone Mobile. And we got some leaked footage here from the invite only closed alpha for the mobile version of the game. Now, first of all, it's using the classic Verdance map that was in the Warzone when it came out on console and PC. And you can just really see what it is. It's Call of Duty Warzone, exactly as you expected, mobile, mobile graphics, but the exact same gameplay, the exact map for from the original Warzone. And I think this is going to be just absolutely massive and getting more people into playing it because you see the amount of people who played already. Then there's the people that just can't afford a PC, can't afford a console, but pretty much everybody has a smartphone that is going to be able to play Call, Call of Duty Warzone. And they already have other battle royales on mobile. So this is just kind of getting in line with that in terms of like Fortnite and PUBG. But very cool to see this game actually running on a phone. And it's supposed to be releasing in 2022 at some point. We just don't know. The exact data and when i think about this game i think about call of duty warzone mobile to me it's just another big thing that probably had microsoft extremely excited when they went ahead with the acquisition of activision blizzard we know they want to expand their mobile presence with the games that they have king and candy crush was a big reason for that acquisition of activision blizzard diablo immortal has been doing extremely well even with all the microtransaction stuff, I mean, they made $24 million in their first two weeks of Diablo Immortal from those microtransactions. Now there's going to be this. So it's another huge mobile game where Xbox and Microsoft are going to have a big grasp on that mobile market with three just absolutely massive games that people are going to be playing for a very long time. And sticking on the subject of mobile games, Diablo Immortal. This is a huge game that came out. People have been enjoying it in terms of the gameplay, but they've really been disliking the microtransactions as there has been a ton of outcry over the implementation of microtransactions into Diablo Immortal. However, that outcry doesn't seem to be working at all as there have been $24 million made in just two weeks from Blizzard off of the microtransactions within Diablo Immortal. Now, to be fair, they do say here in part of this article that you can spend more than 20 hours of microtransaction free gameplay before you actually decide if you want to spend money on it. You can see if you like the game. And if you do, you go ahead and spend money on it. But the microtransactions seem to really limit your chances or you have to spend a ton of money before being able to get some of the five star rare gems in the game to equip to your character and make him the most powerful character that you can have. In fact, this streamer here actually spent Fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars, almost sixteen thousand dollars, fifty thousand nine hundred ninety-seven U.S. dollars, in order to try to get his first five-star gem. And this streamer is Quinn sixty-nine, who then, after getting the five-star gem, deleted his character and uninstalled the game. So literally, just burnt sixteen thousand dollars to get a gem and then never play the game again. And the reason this happens is because you have to buy these things called legendary crests, which are applied during the Elder Rift dungeons, and then these crests let players earn runes and gems during these dungeons, which all differ each time in value. And for this streamer here, Quinn69 took him 25,000 New Zealand dollars of attempts for earning his first five-star gem. So the rarity of these gems are crazy. It seems like you're gonna have to be spending a ton of money if you want any chance to be able to get these rare five-star gems. And I think there's six slots that you can equip gems to your characters i don't know if the 
the rarity level is the same in terms of getting them and the chances are the same across all the different gens, but just absolutely crazy in terms of the microtransactions. But yeah, pretty crazy stuff there. $50,000 to play the game. But again, if people are still spending on it, these things are going to keep happening because $24 million in two weeks for Blizzard from these microtransactions, they're probably looking at all these complaints and thinking, why do we have to change anything? People are willing to spend the money on it. And then finally, we got some interesting information on kind of the process of how games are made in sense of where they're going to be publishing these games. There are two big games that one's out, one is coming out. The first one is The Quarry, which is a horror narrative driven style of game has gotten great reviews is out right now and you can play it anywhere you want and then you have high on life which was a game that was shown off at the xbox and bethesda showcase a huge surprise i think for a lot of people including myself i think it was like the third game that they showed off loved the graphic style loved the humor from the writers of rick and morty just looks like it is going to be one of those games that you sit down and you're just going to have great fun and great laughs from the get-go of it and this game is coming over as an Xbox launch exclusive and coming day one onto Xbox Game Pass. But we may have never been able to play these games unless you were subscribed to Google Stadia as it seems like both of these games were meant for Google Stadia before we, we see the downfall of Stadia. They're closing their development studios and these games went back into the process of finding a place to be published on. Xbox was able to scoop up High on Life, get it on their platform, make it an Xbox launch exclusive, which I think is a great thing for Xbox Game Pass. And then you have the Quarry, which is multi-platform and out on every other platform as well. There are two games people are now able to experience everywhere, and it may have not been for that if it wasn't for the fact that Google Stadia is essentially now just a failing platform. That's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts on Redfall, the Call of Duty Mobile Warzone gameplay. Are you excited for High on Life? Is that a game you're going to be playing when it comes out day one on Xbox Game Pass? And what do you think about the amount of money people are spending on Diablo Mortal? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you're new here. You enjoyed what you saw throughout this video. You found it entertaining, you found it informative. I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button to help grow this community and help grow this channel. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support. I'll catch you in the next video.